Washington, D.C., home to more than a half million people and at least a million stories. This one begins at a little white house, just seven miles from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This is the story of a chess club founded for inner city youth. It's different from most. It's distinguished in boasts of not just teaching chess, but truth. It teaches young children to reason, to rationalize, to use good sense and intelligence against deception, treachery, and lies. So at the Big Chair Chess Club, we're on a mission to save the lives of our children, to teach the unteachable, reach the unreachable, and always think before you move. Eugene Brown bought the old house in the early 90s. Then traveled to the city's toughest neighborhoods, recruiting kids to learn chess and join his club. I'm going into my third decade of, of teaching chess. And I can actually say that I think that I'm the one that bought chess east, east of the river in Washington, D.C. Yet this is more than just a game to the D.C. native. It's a lifesaver for the thousands who've sat down with him over the years. Some of them never learn how to be real good chess players, but that's not our mission. Our mission is to get them to think before they move, you know, because of I've seen too many kids make impulsive decisions that's, that's ended up costing them the rest of their life. Impulsive decisions put Brown's son in jail for 16 years. His grandson is behind bars now. And despite his mother and father's love and hard work, Eugene did time too. I must have did almost close to 20 years on layaway plans, a, a seven year here, a eight year here, a six month here. We visited one of those stops where Eugene went after trying to hold up a bank for $3,200. I went in St Trenton State Prison in New Jersey in 1969, I was a young guy. I didn't know anyone in that prison. Eugene Brown spent more than a dozen years locked up here at the New Jersey State Prison for that botched robbery attempt. They were among the toughest years of his life, but he still took solace in playing the game of chess. That's how I did my time on a chessboard. I've seen the Muslims, I've seen the Christians, I've seen the the stick up guys, I've seen everybody had their clicks and my click was chess, you know, and that's what, that's what I carried around. The big change came when another inmate taught Brown to apply the game to his life. I said, man, I lost, I ain't know. He said, man, you never lose. He said, you're either learning lessons or you're teaching lessons. Chess is the only game that can't be won. It can only be played, just like life. Three stages of life. Your opening, that's when you're a young fella. The middle game, that's when you like middle age. And the end game. He's been sharing those lessons with children since his release. The work has earned chess awards, recognition from the city. And now, his story moves to the big screen in Life of a King, starring Academy Award winner Cuba Gooding Jr. Ah, yes, the pawns. They are the front line. They will be casualties. Prince born, man. Kids game. That was really a wonderful experience to watch it the first time. And, uh, and I think that's why I'm here talking about it like crazy. Gooding compares this role to the noble characters he's played in films like Men of Honor, Red Tails, and Gifted Hands. You are a man of faith and you make no bones about being a Christian that's right. in Hollywood. That's right. Uh, one of the things we love about you. <laughs> You know, I'm surprised my pastor sees all my phone Because there ain't no commitment. Some of them movies ain't Christian -like. Did you see Shadowboxing? This film doesn't blatantly, this film doesn't blatantly display faith, but surely you see it in the film. No, it's God's will. It really is. This and and that's what's so cool about stuff like this, man. It's like you know, I'm no saint at, in any way, and I make mistakes and I sin constantly. But it's my relationship I have. When you learn about people doing great things like this who have been incarcerated, it's easy to say, oh, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a felon. He's an ex-con. But this is an ex-con who made a difference in the life of these kids who are now considered intellectuals. You know, and uh, 
And that connective tissue of society and life is what intrigues me. And I hope that, uh, you know, people find healing in stories like this. King Perry it is. Now, King Perry has an army, and you're a part of it. But the problem is, you think you're out there doing the king's business, all you're really doing is sacrificing yourself. Like the pawn, you truly are. It ain't like that, B. It's exactly like that, partner. I didn't know I looked that good. <laughs> <laughs> Brown loves the film, but says he can't take credit for this latest move in his endgame. The only reason this movie was made, the only reason that I'm here is it's an ancestral blessing. You know, it's from my great-great-grandmother that probably prayed for us, my grandmother that prayed. I know my mother, you know, so this is all of those people that prayed, you know, for, for our family, for me. And he thanks God for turning his tale of disgrace into a story of dignity. Once you accept God, there's no limit to what you can do. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Washington.